This is Nat with the Other Side Nursery. Today, let's talk about thrips. So, thrips are unfortunately part of the ecosystem, so they do their own beneficial something. I have no idea what they're beneficial for, but we have to get rid of them. Uh, thrips can be detected by uh, the damage that they do on the leaves. Um, in this case, there are little brown holes. This plant hasn't really been moving around too much, so there shouldn't really be any kind of leaf damage. But I started noticing stuff like this, so I had to investigate. Uh, sometimes they can do damages like, um, it looks like someone scratched, or it looks like someone, um, you know, like a scratch mark on your leaf, almost like a gnawing on the leaf without the leaf actually being torn or anything like that, but um, I don't see that kind of damage on this one, but I do see the little brown spots. And don't freak out whenever you see little brown spots because sometimes it's completely normal. So what I did, I flipped the leaf over because a lot of times you see the thrips underneath the leaf, and then you use you will start seeing these little, um, they look like little splinters. I got rid of all the adult ones already on this plant, so I can't really show anything. But yeah, they start, they look like little splinters. Um, the only way I can tell that they're thrips is either by watching closely to watch them move or just blowing air on them. Whenever I blow air on them, they start wiggling around, so that's how you can kind of identify them. But they're relatively easy to get rid of as long as you have the time. Um, so this is what I usually do when I start seeing thrips. So first of all, I already did this part, but when it's on the shelf, I'll spray, spray it down with alcohol. This is 70% isopropyl alcohol, isopropyl, I don't know how to pronounce that, but this. 70% um, just spray the entire plant down and pretty much spray the neighboring plants and neighboring rack and all that stuff and once again thrips do fly so you know you you can only do your best to get rid of it or get rid of the ones you see so spray everything down I do this just to knock out the adults um, I don't want them to start flying around when I take the plant into isolation, um, spray down, and then after about a minute or two, I already did this so I don't have to be too thorough with it, after about a minute or two, you take water, um, you take water and then you just kind of spray that down because you don't want the alcohol to stay on the leaf for too long it can cause burning a lot of plants can handle having rubbing alcohol on it some plants don't I don't really want to find out which ones can and can't handle so that's why I'm rinsing the, plant, the leaves down uh, and then after that after that you just let the plants dry out a little bit it doesn't have to be completely dry but it's a lot easier for the the insect treatment to stick onto the leaves when it's not this kind of wet but I'll just use extra so that it can stay on so to treat thrips I go with spinosad um, the active ingredients here spinosad you can kind of see it it's a chemical compound that's kind of taken or extracted from bacteria. I don't know the full science behind it, but it should... Spinosad, like pure, pure spinosad, should be uh, non-toxic, non-carcinogenic. Um, yeah, it's kind of safe to use with veggies and stuff like that also. But you always want to rinse it before you eat it. Keep that in mind. So yeah, um, what... I would do is move this to, oh, to the floor just because I don't want it to be flying around everyone. So you just cover everything. Oh, sorry. First you shake it. Shake, shake, shake. Because spinosad, the chemical itself, likes to settle down at the bottom. So you want to shake this a lot. And then just cover the entire plant. 
down bottom underneath the leaf and make sure this is the important part make sure you get it into the soil so forgot to also so mention that you want to make sure that the soil is pretty moist just because it has to work its way into the roots it's a systemic kind of toxin for these little insects so make sure it's well watered so yeah spray spray into the soil and then yeah all over so yeah you want to make sure that you isolate your plant for a little while um, while you're treating it at least for I usually treat anything with uh, thrips for about three weeks. It is a pretty long process just because um, adults will perish, but then the, um, the little nymphs and stuff like that, they're a little bit more resilient. Um, and if it's an egg right now, spinosad doesn't really do anything to it, so the eggs will hatch in a few days, and that's when you have to kind of repeat the process. And uh, that's why you want to spray it into the soil line so that it's a little bit more systemic. But yeah, give it three three good weeks. Um, you can do a little bit more. You can do this preventatively. It shouldn't harm the plant. So the next step that we'll do here, other than isolating that single plant, is just to spray everything down with spinosad. Um, I'll be doing that for two, three weeks or so. Um, so yeah. Just because one plant has it doesn't mean all the other plants will have it. Sometimes pests can be a little bit choosy about what they do want to eat. Um, some uh, pests are a little bit more specific to the texture, the species of plant, all that stuff. But it's always a good idea just to kind of treat the general area. And unfortunately, if the window or door is open, any pest can come right in. And I don't mean that about here specifically, but just in general. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call or email me at info at the other side nursery .com. Thank you.